As your guys' servers start to grow in popularity, your population is going to start to rise. And of course, with that, you're going to end up with players on your server that you don't necessarily want on your server. That's cheaters, that's hackers, that's other clandestine players that you just don't want on your server. Well, today I'm going to show you one of the tools that I use on my own personal servers to protect me from those types of players. So we'll get into it right after my intro. Welcome to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you all the tips and tools about owning and operating your own successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and tutorials to teach you the best ways to run your servers. So if you're new here, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. And if you take any value out of this video, make sure you hit that like button for me. As I said in the intro, I'm going to show you one of the tools that I use to protect my servers from players that I might not necessarily want to be on there. And that tool is called Steam Checks, and it's available from the UMod website. I'll put a link to it in the video description down below, like I always do. So let's jump right into the plugin and I'll show you what it can do for you. So this is what the plugin looks like on the UMod website. I'm just going to quickly download it and install it into our test server. If you've never seen how to install a plugin before, make sure you click on the card in the top right hand corner right now. It shows you what to expect as you're installing a plugin. Once that's done, we'll dive into the config for the actual plugin. After the plugin is successfully installed, the first thing you'll notice is that the plugin tells you that your Steam API key is invalid. Well, that's because we haven't actually entered one into our config file yet. So this is what the default config file looks like. And as you can see, the very first line there is the Steam API key. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my Steam API key. And I'm not going to show you guys because it is actually my Steam API key. And I don't want to share that with anybody. There's a link on the page for the Steam Checks plugin. It will take you to a place where you can acquire your own Steam API key. Once you've got that, you're going to copy and paste it from that website and you're going to paste it into your config file. Make sure you save it and reload it and then that error is going to go away. Okay, so now I've entered my Steam API key. I've reloaded the plugin and as you can see, there are no errors. So let's dive into the config file. This is a super simple plugin. This shouldn't take very long to go over, but I do want to discuss some of the features, advantages and benefits of it. So this plugin is broken up into four different categories. The first one is broadcasting. The second one is kicking. The third one is thresholds and the fourth one is the whitelist. We're going to go over each one individually and I'll explain the features of all of them. So basically what Steam Checks does is it takes your player, whoever, whatever player tries to enter your server, it runs their Steam ID through a set of filters. If they don't make it out the bottom of those filters, then they're not going to make it into your server. If they do pass all those filters, obviously they're going to get in. So if they get hung up on one of the filters, we have to make some decisions. Are we going to broadcast that to the server or not? From default, all of the broadcasts are set to true. So whatever fault they land on, whether it be VAC bans, game bans, whatever it is, it's going to broadcast that into your public chat and everyone's going to know why that player didn't make it into your server, which can be beneficial. It can also scare away players. So it's you have to do a bit of a balancing act. It's good for your legitimate players to know that you have protections in place to make sure that you're not going to allow cheaters or hackers into your server. The downside to it is, is it might look maybe a little bit over controlling to the point where people are like, eh, I don't really want to play in a server that has that strict rules. So you can do this in the background simply by making all of these broadcasts false. It still allows all the same filters to happen, but it doesn't broadcast when somebody gets kicked out because they didn't meet one of the criteria. Your decision. You need to decide what works best for your server. So that's broadcasting. The next section is the kicking section. So this is where you get to determine what those filters are. So if the player has a community ban and we've left this toggle left at true, then they're going to get kicked out. They're not going to be allowed entry into your server. Now, the more important ones that I want you to make a note of is back ban, game ban, recent ban, uh, trade bans is more community type stuff, not necessarily gaming stuff. So if they have any of those types of bans on their Steam profile, they're not going to be allowed entry into your server. We're going to come back to the rest of these parameters inside of kicking. I want to cover the thresholds first. So the VAC ban threshold is default set at two. That means that a player is allowed to have two VAC bans on their Steam profile and they're still allowed entry into your server. Anything higher than that, and they're no longer going to be allowed into your server. Same thing goes with game ban. Now, the recent ban section is set to 365 days, and that's just default. So basically what that means is anybody that has gotten a ban in the last 365 days, no matter how many bans they've had, they can't get into your server. So it might only be one ban, but if it happens inside of 365 days from today, they're not allowed into your server. So if you're feeling really generous, now let me give you an idea. Somebody that has one VAC ban on their Steam profile, 
that could have been somebody that was dabbling into hacking and cheating and stuff like that. And then they got kicked or banned or whatever, and they've learned their lessons. So they never went back to cheating. Somebody that has two back bands on their Steam profile, you want to start questioning. Okay, you didn't learn the first time. You haven't learned the second time, or maybe you haven't learned the second time. What's to say that you're not hacking right now? So if you were to set this number to three, so this player is allowed to have three VAC bands on their account, you're just asking for trouble. You're just asking for people to come into your server and exploit everything. They're going to be cheating. They're going to be hacking, uh, you know, ESP, all that stuff. You don't want that. The players that have three and four VAC bands on their profile, they've cheated in other games. They've cheated in Rust. They cheat. They just cheat. They're cheaters. And you don't want them in your server. The reason why they put the recent ban at 365 days is you want to allow players to redeem themselves. So let's say they did get busted once and it was more than a year ago or more than 365 days ago. Maybe they learned their lesson. Maybe they deserve another shot at this. That's completely up to you. You get to make all of these decisions. So on one of my most popular servers, I have my threshold set very low. So I only allow one back ban, but not within the last 365 days. So if you have two VAC bands on your Steam profile, you're not coming into my, my most popular server. Before we go back into the rest of the kicking parameters, I want to discuss the whitelist. The whitelist is, let's say you have somebody that you absolutely want to have in your server and they just can't get past all of these Steam checks. You can put their Steam64 ID on the whitelist, save and reload the plugin, and then they'll be allowed access past all of these checks, which means you're never going to get notified if this person, if they have a VAC ban, if they have a game ban, you're never going to get notified. It just immediately whitelists them past all of the checks. You have no protection from that player. So you want to make sure that it's somebody that you know and trust. Don't put a whole bunch of people on your whitelist. You're asking for trouble if you do. So going back into the kicking section, I'll just finish up with the rest of these parameters. So Private profile is default set to true. So if the player tries to join your server and their, their profile is set to private, they're not going to be allowed access. So what I do is I actually make it so that this is a requirement that your, your profile is viewable from the public. That way I can see what kind of stuff you've been up to. I can see how many hours you have in the game, how many hours you have in other games. I can see everything I need to know about you, which will determine whether I should be able to trust you or not. So if an accusation comes in against a player, I know that I can go to their Steam profile and learn as much about them as I possibly can. So hours played is the next section on there. And I want you to be really careful with this. In fact, for brand new servers, I would suggest turning this to false because you don't want to monitor hours played or you want to change your threshold to really low. The reason why they put that in there is so that you can make it so that new players cannot join your server. So players like by default, Players that have less than 25 hours in the game can't join your server. So you're basically cutting your server off to those players that have less than 25 hours. So be careful with that one, but know that that option is there. Family sharing. If you want to block people that are using family sharing accounts. If you want to know more about family sharing accounts, post a comment down below and I can explain it. And family owner obviously goes into that same category. So you can block players that are using family share or you can, I don't know why you would, but you could block the family owner, I guess. No profile. That's another one that, you know, brand new players to the game that maybe haven't even set up their Steam profile yet. I would change this to false for new server owners. You don't want to block your server out from players that just bought the game and might happen to stumble across your server. You want to allow them in there. So I would suggest turning no profile to false. Game count is the same thing. You don't want to like you have to picture a player that just bought their very first copy of Rust, their very first Steam purchase, whatever. You don't want to block those players from stumbling across your server and gaining entry. So I would leave both of those last two at false so, so that those checks aren't even in place. So that's Steam Checks. It's a very simple plugin, but very, very effective. It's a very powerful tool. And like I said, I use it across all of my servers. I have different thresholds set up for different servers, depending on what the player base is like on each one. But I do use it in some version on all my servers. Now, a couple of notes. There are no permissions for this because there's nothing game side that you need to do with it. There's also no data file that you need to delete when you do a wipe, which if I had to pick something is actually one of the cons to this plugin. It doesn't log players that are trying to gain access to your server that aren't meeting these thresholds. So that would be my only complaint to the developer is that they should log that information. And then there would be something that we could decide whether we wanted to keep it wipe over wipe over wipe. If you want to keep watching more videos from this playlist, I'll put the link right there. And if you want to watch my most recent video, other than the one you're watching right now, 
I'm gonna put that one right there. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys on the next one.